Hello again, Michael Friedberg here from beautiful North Carolina. And before we get started with today's shave, happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there. To my father, Richard, to my brother, Peter, to my brother-in-law, Martin, and sadly, in memoriam, to my father-in-law, Brian, who passed away this year. Well, today's shave is going to be two new products and a repeat from last week, as promised. Today's shaving soap is from Noble Otter. It is the Barbar. Bar. It's their version of their barbershop scent. Uh, let me show you the soap first, and then we'll talk about the scent notes and ingredients. Uh, it is, again, a... You can dent it, so it's hard-ish, but kind of soft. Definitely not a hard soap. Um, nice color to it. The scent... <sighs> well... Ah, oh, scent is just, it's a really nice mix actually, and it's not what I expected it to be in terms of a barbershop scent, it's a really interesting take on it. So the scent notes, as listed on the label, are lemon, rosemary, basil, oak moss, sandalwood, and patchouli. And what I get is kind of a spicy undertone, and the lemon and the basil and the rosemary as kind of a herbaceous, bright part of the scent. The sandalwood, I think, and the, and the oak moss and the patchouli kind of merge as a base there, but this has a really nice kind of underlying spicy scent to it, and I'm going to a bright touch of the notes on top. Really quite surprised at, that, at how nice this is. I, I don't know what I was expecting. I thought just, for me, barbershop smells like a certain thing, which I think is part of the problem with saying a barbershop scent. Um, barbershop to you may not be barbershop to me, but very, very nice. Now, in terms of ingredients, there are a couple things to note here. So. This is a tallow and lanolin based soap, so if you're allergic to lanolin, this is one to avoid. But it does include some ingredients to call out. For example, avocado oil. It has tucuma seed butter. Very hard to read, very small letters, by the way. It does contain cocoa butter. It does contain bentonite clay, so if you're a clay purist, then you would unfortunately have to avoid this. Big mistake on your part. Uh, it does contain watermelon extract as well as white willow bark extract and tussa silk. This is definitely a very different base than the original base that Noble Otter brought out. This is a significantly improved basically in every area. We'll talk about it as we go through the shave. Now, the razor for today has been lent to me. Uh, it's the second of the two timeless razors I have on loan. Today, it's going to be the titanium. This is the 0.95 uh, millimeter blade gap. So as you can see, take a look at the top cap there. Those two long bars really hold the blade and place you have a long threaded screw top there today's blade is going to be a super iridium it started off this week with a wilkinson sword blade three shaves and then i switched over to this this will be shave number three base plate as you can see that long center groove i kind of like the design on this i like the way that head design looks it just looks cool and a little bit different i have not had any issues with clogging with this razor at all uh, let me just get the head in there. Beautiful, beautiful fit, by the way. Very, very tight tolerances. Once the head goes on, there is basically no wiggle in the uh, in the razor head at all. Handle is the same handle, I believe, as the one from last week, except, of course, in titanium. This has the same kind of a screw thread theme with the, uh, the small indent here. Although this handle, like the previous one, has not been slippery, my personal preference, I think, is still for one that hasn't been a knurling on there. All right, I'm gonna tighten it up. I do have a washer included in there. Now, there is a touch of, uh, you know, blade over cap, there's just a cap here. You know, the exposure's a little bit at the end, but you know what? It's not the end of the world, but my money, my preference would be, if I'm gonna spend this much on a razor, I'd like to see the ends really covered there. That's just a personal preference. I know it helps if you had to adjust the blade, but the fact is alignment, I don't think is an issue on those razor heads at all. So if I had my preference, I'd want to see the ends completely covered. Okay, let's begin lathering up today. I'm using, I think this might be the last of the Yaki, of the original set of Yaki brushes I have. I've already given away a, a ton of them. This is the Timberwolf knot. So this is a little less springy than the Tuxedo. Still very, very soft tips. As you can see, sort of the, the colors are inverted. They're gray in the bottom and black on the top. Gray on the inside. Very nice handle. A nice weight, nice heft to it, um, easy to hold design, Yaki brush on the bottom. All right, I have the soap pressed into the Captain's Choice loading bowl. Now, this is the first week, by the way, in an extremely long time where I've had to actually add soap to the bowl as I'm using the soap in the week. And I had scooped out what I thought 
was plenty for the week. However, this brush is incredibly uh, greedy when it comes to loading. It just sucks up the soap and it was just pulling up so much. So just be aware, this Timberwolf knot, for whatever reason, it is loading a lot of soap very, very easily. So that's something just to bear in mind. I, I tore through what I thought was a week's worth of soap and it was just gone on Friday. So I've had to reload the bowl a little bit. All right, I'm just soaking the brush through. This is a thirsty soap, by the way. So although I'm going to shake up most of the water, I'm still gonna dip the tips a little bit and start off not with a wet brush, but with a bit of a damper brush. And I'm gonna load pretty heavy, which will not be hard with this brush at all. Um, I'm not the only one experiencing this uh, this sort of soap loading fervor on this brush's part, by the way. Others have reported something very similar. I'll just show you what's happening. Now, the only downside to this brush is that clanking, and it's because the knot is relatively low, and because you're sort of loading vigorously, there is the occasional clanking, which I know, I some people love that sound. Not me. All right, there we go. That is, as you can see, that is pretty thick and pasty. And you can see what's happening. The brush is starting to get quite full of soap, but not stopping yet. I'm going to add a bit of water, and I found this to be really helpful during the week. It's just touches of water while you're loading because the soap is pretty thirsty. So I'm going to put a bit more in again, and then we'll be done loading the brush. If need be, might have to go back and load some more, but I, I doubt it. I know, famous last words. Okay, let me wipe my face and we'll go ahead and start lathering. Yeah, I've used the uh, the original the original Noble Otter. I think I had the flying hide and I passed it on to a colleague. I think at first wasn't quite sure about the leather scent and I think I took a couple more sniffs and realized a very evocative scent actually. And this, uh, this may be evocative. I mean, this may be a familiar scent to some, this particular style of barbershop. It isn't for me, but that doesn't in any way diminish my enjoyment of the scent. All right, here we go. Kind of wet brush, wet face. Let's start lathering. Now, as soon as you start, you have a sort of a slick sensation as you're moving the brush over your face. Even though there's still a lot of water coming out of the out of the uh, the base of the knot or the breach of the knot, you don't feel like you're sort of drowning out the soap at all. And I'm going to for sure have to add more water. Soap's certainly been very easy to lather, but I think this is one of those ones where you just have to caution people. Your initial lather may look good, but you are 100% going to want to add more water. So that's got good coverage, but a little too thick, but you can see starting to peak nicely already. The other thing is that you sort of get a feel for how the brush is moving over the soap itself. And if it feels a little bit thick or pasty, well, then you just don't have enough water added yet. Yep, that's starting to come together very nicely. I think I've got a lot of soap in this brush. Day one, I absentmindedly sort of already distracted about thinking about work, the first Monday morning shave, which I know, don't shave when distracted, but it happens more often than I'd like. I overloaded and then just without really paying attention to it, started shaving with, now that it was just a little too thick, very easily fixed up by just adding a touch of water. Okay, that is much better. You can see how that's pulling away and peaking a little bit. There we go. Tons on the brush, so I think we're gonna be fine. All right. So yeah, so this is the opposite end of the spectrum in terms of aggression for the razor I used last week. This is the 0.95, let me just show you what the blade looks like in there, if you can see, looks like quite a bit of blade exposure, to say that carefully. But, fact of the matter is, this does not feel at all unsafe or overly sort of blade naked on the face. 
I know that's not a term, blade naked, but you know what I mean? You don't feel a lot of sort of just uncontrolled uncontrolled blade edge on your skin. Yeah, in comparison to the uh, to the previous razor, which I think was a 0.38, that in retrospect, although very comfortable, I would say for me it would actually be too mild. This is a much better choice. The razor is also, of course, much lighter than the uh, than the brass. Haha! <laughs> Fooled you, bronze. Thanks for pointing that out, by the way. Those mistakes happen because for some reason, even though in your head you're saying, remember, say bronze. The wrong word comes out. Anyway. Yeah, this razor is just supremely easy to use, I found. And I do actually, I do actually really quite like just how light the razor is in comparison to the razor, razor from last week. This would be of the two, this would be 100% my choice over the other one. Nothing wrong with last week's at all, just in terms of my preferences. This is a, is a better fit. Okay, that was a very quick, very easy first pass. Okay, now, God, there's so much water running down my arm right now. This is hideous. Okay, look how much is stuck at the bottom of the brush there. So I'm just going to use my finger and just sort of pull that up and off. I um, hope you can see beautiful, glossy, kind of a creamy lather. When you're using it, you just feel like a sort of a fundamental slickness. Very, very nice soap. I, I was I was already pretty happy with their previous, with their, you know, their, their debut entry into the, uh, into the soap market. But this this is absolutely better. I think easier to lather, feels better on the face. Sense strength is definitely pretty good out of the container. And when it lathers, I'm actually getting more of sort of the uh, the undertones, a bit more of the spice than the uh, than those bright notes off the puck. Sense strength is no, nah, I don't know. It's actually nah, maybe a little less when lathered. Or just different. Okay, there we go. Alright, pass number two. This is going to be across the grain. So as always, for these Sunday shaves, two days worth of growth. Now, I was nervous at first because it's a very substantial jump. jump and aggression from last week's shave, but man, Monday's shave was so easy. And on the advice of the person who lent me the razor, I actually did a, just a two pass and then elected not to do any cleanups, no real touch ups. I mean, I could have obviously, but two pass shave still very, very nice. And I don't know about you, but there are definitely days when I just feel like my skin needs a bit of a break. And two pass shave is perfectly fine. So it was really nice and slick, very easy to use, good protection. Really been a pleasure all week. This is one spot where the, the end overhang is a bit of a pain.
Yeah, lovely, lovely, easy shave. Definitely understand why these razors are so popular. Easy to use. Love the design. The head looks fantastic. I do like the fact that there are other options for the handles. Like I said, I would personally go for more knurling, but that handle is still not hard to use. And if you like kind of a very clean, simple, lightly textured handle, that's a great option. All right, I've just sort of pulled some of the lather up off the brush. I have a feeling I'll be squeezing it out in just a moment to pull the whatever lather stuck in the knot. I have to say, I, I think I prefer this knot overall to the tuxedo simply because there's just a little less spring and a little less backbone. It displays a bit more easily. Tips are still quite as, you know, about as soft, if not basically exactly the same, but really a pleasure to use. With the one possible drawback being, you just have to note that this brush is going to dig into whatever soap you're loading and just adjust for that. All right, let's pull out some of the remainder. As you can see, the brush is holding onto quite a bit. Look how beautiful, creamy, protective lather you're getting out of this. Really a wonderful upgrade to the soap. Gotta say, job very well done by Noble Otter. I also have to commend them on their redesign of the labels. Really quite a nice, if you take a look, excuse the lather all over my hands, but a really nice upgrade to the way that they've done the label design. And each one of these labels has a different representation of the otter to sort of um, highlight the, uh, the particular soap. All right, final pass. This will be against the grain. Very, very light touch here. Yeah, even, even though this is the more aggressive of the two, this still feels very, very safe in use. Yeah, good slickness on the soap. Really makes this part easy. There we go. I think it was Chris from another cut above, another YouTube shaver who made some comment about the way I shave this against the grain pass. And it's not really a completely perfect in every way against the grain. I guess you could say I'm cheating a little, but I'm cheating on the side of comfort. I mean, that's just the choice I'm making. I could, of course, make myself do like a perfectly perfect in every way against the grain, but it's just not comfortable in spots and I don't find it really to be necessary. So what I do is I just vary the angle. Try to get good coverage on those spots.
Now, one thing I've noticed about this razor and this soap, and I don't think it's the soap, I think it's the razor, is that it is shaving so efficiently that basically you don't really want to be shaving where there is no lather. Now, when you wet your face with this soap, you get an extremely slick layer back. Like right there, that is slick, but it is not until you add the water back because that razor is just taking it off right down to the skin. So until you sort of re-spread the remaining soap, your skin actually feels like there's just nothing left there. And I'm pretty impressive in a lot of ways without any irritation, no heat, just beautiful, beautiful, just, man, this is a wonderful shave. So easy. I don't think I'd go down to the, uh, to the middle aggression on those on those razors. I think I would 100% stick with, with that. All right, let me just do a very quick, just using the remaining water. All right, done. Now rinsing, it's a little bit recalcitrant, a little bit difficult to get off, but I think that's in part because it's just very, very slick. And it's got a good amount of fat in it, so let me get my ears a little bit clean. Today's aftershave is going to be the same aftershave that I've used all week. So I'm going to do is leave my face. I'm going to just take as much of the soap off as I can. And then what I've been doing is just kind of pulling most of the water off and then adding the aftershave, which is going to be again the Chatillon Lux, the 2018 Maggard Razors Meetup aftershave I have only used and that's two weeks now about a third of the bottle so uh, it's really quite a generous sample I have to say because that's probably that's going to be five or six weeks worth of aftershave so I'm just going to put a few drops in my hand don't overdo it apply to a slightly damp face goes on easy and just work it in Beautiful feel to it. No tingle from the alcohol at all. Just a tiny touch now as the menthol slowly begins to build and just a touch of menthol. And then I'll clean up my ears in a moment. I quite like the scent. My wife, not 100% a fan, but can't win them all. All right, there we go. Wow, well, huh. <laughs> Once again, just, man, that's just a beautiful, beautiful shave. That razor is just phenomenal, really phenomenal. So easy to use. Okay, let's do a quick recap. Today's soap, this is the new, let me just clean off some of the lather off the, uh, off the container. This is version two of their soap base. This is the new improved soap base, a tallow and lanolin based soap. So yes, if you're lanolin sensitive, skip this. It has a range of other sort of rich oil and butter ingredients. Post shave on this has been very, very good. I've had no tightness, no heat. Uh, perfect pairing with the aftershave in terms of the skin quality. Uh, the scent on this, it doesn't evoke a barbershop for me, but then again, this is these are not the barbershops I would have gone to, but this may very well evoke a certain a certain memory or recollection for you and you know a bit of nostalgia included in there. I have really enjoyed using this soap. I think it's a job very well done, a clear improvement over this over the previous uh, pre version of the soap. I like the fact that they've actually addressed the issues that they have with the labeling. Um, overall, this is just better in, in every way. Really enjoyed the soap all week. Very nice scent, excellent performance. Good slickness, good protection, thirsty soap, so just watch out for that. And then post-shave face feel has been very, very good. Very, very happy with that. In combination with the second of the two timeless razors, I've had the opportunity and the pleasure and the honor of being able to borrow. This is the 0.95 millimeter exposure, titanium. I love the head design. Uh, the weight is just right for me. The handle length is good. Yes, I would prefer more knurling, and yes, I would want to see the the end tabs enclosed in there, but those are extremely minor, minor points. That's really more personal preference. Um, it does in fact actually have, I don't know if you'll be able to see that or not, but it does have a designation on the head for what the blade gap is, which I think is very well done. Always a good job to kind of mark those. And I didn't show this last time, but the bottom of the, uh, of the handle does have their circular ever repeating timeless razor logo, which is also very well done. I have 
really enjoyed these shaves. These have been incredibly easy, smooth, comfortable shaves, despite the blade gap, which might give you pause to begin with. Beautiful, smooth, effortless, easy shaves. You can just see how easy that just marched through two days worth of growth. Phenomenal, phenomenal shaves. Just thumbs up all around. The brush from Yaki. Thank you once again for saying these for a review. This is the Timberwolf Knot. Well, kind of hard to see with all the lather in there. Um, again, this is less springy than the Tuxedo Knot. Very thirsty, kind of a greedy, greedy knot. Sucks up the soap, so just be aware of that. I'd have to say between the two, I think I would pick the Timberwolf over the uh, over the Tuxedo just because of the way that it displays and a little less, uh, little less backbone. And then finally, and yes, it's two weeks run is over and I'm gonna miss it, but we'll move on to something else next week. The Chatillon Lux uh, Aftershave. I have really, really enjoyed using this. It's been fantastic for my skin. I love the scent uh, and I wish I could keep using it, but there's other products waiting in the queue. Now, as for those other products, I had a mountain of soaps. And yes, there was some eye rolling on the part of people in the house as to how many soaps I purchased at Maggard's. That's already blown over. Anyway, I put all those into a randomizer to try to just go through and I sort of set up an order and I've tweaked it a little bit so things were kind of clumped. Um, and after I did all that, so I have a, a queue of those soaps and aftershaves ready to go for the next 10, 12, 15 weeks, whatever. It's a long time, but I completely forgot to add in there the shave sticks that I bought for part of the series I'm going to do on haven't used in ages. And I'll sort of be rolling those into the sequence. So it'll actually, the, the, the total time it'll take me to get through all the new soaps and aftershaves, including the shave stick for the things I haven't used in quite a long time. That's gonna be quite an extended period of time. So if you're waiting for a particular product to show up, unfortunately, I can't exactly tell you when that's going to be, but not to fear, there are months to come of new product reviews and revival of products I have not used in quite some time. We'll see how they do. Uh, in terms of their original, my original assessment, but also compared to the shave market for today. So with that, let me say once again, happy Father's Day to all of you. Thank you again so much for watching these videos. I really appreciate the time you're taking to watch them. Please keep the comments and questions coming. It really helps sort of add to the sense of community and kind of the sharing of information that we see on those YouTube channels. It's, it's really fantastic. Um, I love going through and replying to all of those. If you have questions or comments for this video or any previous ones, please feel free to leave those. I'll get back to those as quick as I can. Thank you once again so much for watching and until next time, goodbye.